Hey everybody, it's Steve with Sky194, and I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to stop in and visit and check out my video. And we are here at Zanvor, and I had a request for a setup for the BMW M6. So, um, I haven't driven it in a while, so I mean, I always try to throw a little bit of variety out there. Um, you know, something a little different once in a while. So, and I, I really enjoy driving the M6. I mean, it's one of those cars, this is just my opinion. It's just one of those cars that I, you know, it's not the fastest car out there, but it's just a fun car to drive. Um, you know, I like the sounds. Um, I love the stability of the car. It's got, you know, it's got that in spades and, um, you know, very predictable. And uh, it's just, again, you know, it really communicates to you what it likes, what it doesn't like. Um, and, you know, it doesn't feel like it's on the ragged edge all the time or something. So it's just, you know, something a little different. And, um, you know, I think it ran pretty good here. I think, you know, the times were decent. You know, obviously it's not as fast as, you know, some of the other cars. Uh, but that's, you know, of course it's an older car. So, but I still think it held itself, you know, very well. And where it shines is consistency and stability. And um, so let's we'll do a couple laps. And of course, and then we'll go over the setup. And of course, the setup will be in the description uh, also. And also, just before we get started, um, I am got a little delayed with everything that was going on uh, with the my wheel and all that this last week with the uh, Porsche at Spa. Again, it's really close. Um, and, and actually, I'm almost working on two separate setups uh, to go two different ways with that car. So that's why it's probably taking a little bit longer. And um, so, and I'm really trying to have something really, you know, something that's a solid, uh, drivable setup. So, um, again, I'm um, sorry it's taking a little bit longer, but just things get in the way sometimes. But it, it is still coming. Um, it's, again, it's close. So, hopefully, it won't be too long. So, let's get to the BMW. Let's jump in the car for this first lap. You know, the hardest thing with me is just getting used to, you know, the size of the car, you know, when you're sitting in it and things like that. So, again, just like all of them, it takes practice. Very good off this last corner. Really good speed. It's good. It's got just as much speed as the Bentley. So, I mean, 157. So, it's very good. Speed isn't the issue. It's the handling um, is where it just moves a little bit here and there compared to maybe the Porsche or the Bentley or AMG uh, stuff like that and that's another one that's going to be coming out soon also is AMG uh, it's, it's getting pretty good so hopefully it'll be done soon also here at Zandvoort here you don't want to get too hard into this bowl area or you'll slide to front so you want to get you want to get a good practice where you go in there good, but you don't want to try to just go crazy with it. Otherwise, you'll chatter the front end. And again, coming to this slick corner like the Bentley, I took it in second. First, you might be a teeny bit faster, but it's too inconsistent, and it's got that turbo lag hit with the BMW. So I think it's just you're better off to use second, be more consistent, and easier on the tires. You're not pushing the front. Very good on the brakes. Very solid. Slid got a little bit of oversteer there. That was me. That's the throttle. I mean, it's just you know you get too heavy on the throttle, and you know with the power it will come around. So again, you got you know you got to do some modulation. Very good there, flat all the way around. And that's what counts is going flat all the way around that corner. Again, 157. Now again with this, I, I, I did the like I did with the Bentley. It's got the half fuel load, um, so it's got, I started with 40 liters. I mean, and that's off of an 80 liter tank. So again, it's like me simulating a pit stop. So this is, I mean, this thing makes some good sounds. Very, look, I mean, this is how stable it is. I mean, you can see there, it, the wheels are not hardly turning, so you got, it's it's not understeering. The car is just very solid. 
mean, it looks glued. Again, here, go through second. Let it try to work its way, you know, practice to come through there as smooth as you can. I mean, I love the sound of that. It sounds really good. And that, of course, I got off the turn better that time. Again, it's flat-footed all the way around. That's a 136.27. So again, I mean, I think that's a good time, and it still did 157 uh, going around the corner. So again, I think it was solid. So let's go over the setup. And of course, the lap before that was a 136.39. So again, it was getting faster and faster. I mean, a 48, a 39, a 27. I mean, it, it just kept getting faster. So again, um, you know, there's a few little hundreds here and a hundred there, but a few hundreds there. Um, so again, you know, I, I it could even go a little quicker maybe, but I still think that's a solid, solid time. And um, I think with the heavier fuel load i think it was running higher 36 like 36 6 36 7 with a heavy you know more of a, like 80 liters so that's what it was running around that times um but again i didn't run it all the way through the whole stint but i mean it was running those times pretty much get right up to get go so let's go over to setup so we got 24 8 left front 25.6 left rear, 26.6 right front, 26.7 right rear. The toe is negative 0 0.02 with the camber at negative 3.4 on the left front, negative 3.2 on the right front with the caster at 11.1. The toe on the rear is 0 0.05 with the camber at negative 3.1 on the left and negative 3 on the right. Now, here, um, I tried some higher negative cambers, but it, it really didn't help. I didn't see any really any gain, and of course, to me, the field just gets worse. And of course, it's going to lose that as it goes anyway. You're going to have, um, you know, as the tires wear, you're going to get more negative camber as the tires wear anyway, because it wears the insides of the tire more than the outside. So you're gonna, it's gonna, and that's where you get the when it gets down to the, you know, like on a longer stint, you got to crank more wheel in it to get it to do to turn. A lot of times and that's a lot of that reason so that's why i rather start off on the tight side um of course you notice on the rear the toe is a, a 0 0.05 it's not a negative it's a positive and that's to help it turn um that's to help the back end rotate a little bit since the bentley or my bentley the bmw needs a little help with that you know again you want it to be smooth and not too much um, it's finding that happy medium because you don't want to get too much power oversteer. You don't mind, I don't mind the throttle helping it turn a little bit, but you don't want to get too much. So again, you want it just to be able to rotate, you know, like going down the bowl and stuff like that, down that hill. You want it to be able to rotate, you know, linear and, uh, and all that. So that at least that's what I was trying to do. Um, electronics are two and two. Fuel, of course, 80 liters. Of course, now, like I said, now the other one I didn't have that much. I only had, I started with 40 like I was simulating a pit stop. So, again, I did that, and I'll show you how uh, I did it. Tire wear is very good. little like graining on one tire at the most, but other than that, the wear is right there, right where you need to be. So, I'm really happy with that. Mechanical, got three on the any roll bar, 55 on the brake bias, steering's all the way down. Springs on the front are 166,000 with a bump stop rate of 700 and a bump stop range of 3. And on the rear, the springs are maxed out at 146,000 with a bump stop rate of 600 and a bump stop range of 10. Any roll bar is 4 and the preload on the diff is 60. So again, um, tried some, some diff couple different combinations with the springs. Um, but the BMW usually likes it a little bit on the stiffer side. So um, I, that's the way I went. And it seems to like it. Um, other than that, of course, you know, brake bias is, you know, I got, I worked that down. I started probably around 57 or so, but 
you know, I, I wanted to go down as much as you can because it really does have good brakes for a bigger car. It really does have good brakes. Um, shocks. Uh, on the front, it's 11, 16, 28, and 26. And on the left rear, it's 10, 18, 30, and 25. And on the right rear, it's 9, 18, 30, and 25. So, again, all these were dialed in with MoTeC multiple times. Um, got them. I think they came in pretty good. So, and actually, you could tell the difference there at the end. It was really helping going down through the bowl and things as the Motec, as it was the shocks were getting more dialed in it was uh really helping it going through there so i think it actually it definitely made a good difference compared to what it was just on standard um the arrow we got 53 in the front 59 in the rear with a five wing and a four and a four and the brake ducts and the front arrow variation is a negative 1.2 now again how i do it because, you know, you see you got 53 and 59. And what I did, and it, just to show everybody who hasn't seen it before, um, to simulate a pit stop, I'll put this up to 40 liters like that. So now you're at 53 and 60. So, again, you know, sometimes it makes a bigger difference. But, again, I just do that to see how it handles. Because, obviously, now this the ride height's come up one here. And, of course, you got a lighter fuel load. So I want to see how it handles to make sure it doesn't do anything crazy um and all that so it was perfect great so um picked up just like it should and the car still felt very you know very neutral um again you know all the cars maybe have a tad bit of oversteer in the very beginning when the tires are cool or when they're cold so again you know the first lap or two you can't really judge it you got to be a little bit more careful you can't just go driving in there super hard because you know, with the tires not up to temp, you'll slide a little or a little maybe oversteery. But once the tires are up to temp and you're good, um, you should it should be fine. And again, that's why you need to adjust the tires to your conditions. Um, you know, to make sure that they're in their range to be optimum. Otherwise, you know, it's not going to feel the same. So again, that's what I do to simulate a pit stop. Um, also, I mean, I've had a couple things people ask about it. Also, I'll bring it up. There is a video in my playlist that shows how to load uh, the setup from the link. So, again, if you're not sure how to do that, it's very simple, very easy. Um, but, you know, again, because if you just click on it, it's going to show garbage, you know, garbage that you don't, you know, what, the, what is this? You can't read it. And that's not what it's meant. It's meant to go in your folder, in your file there, in the folder, and then it'll go in your system. So that's, and I explained that in the video. So again, that's in my playlist. Um, but again, um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope it works good for you. Again, I appreciate a like and subscribe to help out, support the channel. Any comments or feedback are always appreciated. And um, I sure hope that y'all enjoyed it and that you come back real soon. Y'all take care. See ya.